Moving on to the next session, uh, presented by Sundew Solutions. Um, Mr. Charlie Graf, uh, he is the Chief Information Security Officer and also the Chief Information Officer of Sundew Solutions Limited. He's, he has come all the way from Switzerland uh, to attend this conclave and be part of us. Uh, so he's going to present on a topic called security as a design, which is a mandatory paradigm shift for the SMEs. Uh, so Mr. Graf, if I can have you on the stage, please. Um, I know it's fag end of the day, but we Welcome can have a round of applause for Mr. Graf. Welcome to the cosmos of digital Graf. evolution. Times where innovation reigns supreme, yeah. adaptability is the key to survival. Times where we stand as stalwart guardians of your digital journey. We are the architects of your digital destiny. With a visionary foresight, proclaimed strategy, and an unyielding spirit of innovation, we can reshape the very fabric of your digital existence. Navigate the vast expanse of technological possibilities. We craft and tailor solutions that transcend the ordinary, stretching into digital experience, engineering and products, analytics and automation, consulting, our mission does not end here. We are the sole catalyst for collaboration. We orchestrate the harmonious convergence of brands and ideas, sparking fires of innovation, driving collective progress. Join us as we embark on this electrifying odyssey towards digital excellence. Embrace the future with us. So my AV team actually conspired with me, you know, uh, before I could finish, they started, which is nice. Uh, so I was just saying that it's almost a fag end of the day, but I th still think uh, Mr. Graf has come all the way from Switzerland, so he deserves a round of applause. Over to you, Mr. Graf. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for the warm welcome here in Kolkata. Not only the weather, but also you make my stay here in Kolkata always very, very good, and I feel good among you. So many thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak at you to, with you today about data security from the perspective of small and medium enterprises. Why SMEs? Many organizations of smaller size in general believe that data privacy and governance should be only with the large organizations or the banks or the telecoms or all, any other regulated market. Or they simply don't know what to do or where to start. There should be one fundamental principle from the perspective of an SME. Doing something in cybersecurity or data security is always better than do, doing nothing. So applying measures that match the size Capability and resources of an, of an organization is the key. Data security is possible even, the budget is not really big. Hoping will not do the job for you. My key title today is security as a design, as a mandatory principle for all organizations processing sensitive data, and in particular personal data, also called PII or PI. Imagine a world where data privacy and protection are at the forefront of every business decision. In India, the Digital Personal Data Protection Act of 2023 stands for a beacon of hope, setting new standards for protecting personal data. So let's explore the key highlights from the perspective of a company. Compliance obligations. Companies are data fiduciaries entrusted with protecting personal data through robust security measures and transparent data processing practices. The consent management, explicit consent from individuals is mandatory, emphasizing the importance of clear communication of data usage. The purpose of the data collection has to be clear. Data breach notification. Prompt reporting of data breaches to the Data Protection Board ensures quick responses 
and mitigation strategies. In Europe, as an example, this has become a very common practice. And believe me, this board has a lot of work because every day a data breach is notified to the board. Data localization. Sensitive data may be to be stored within India, impacting multinational companies and requiring adjustments to the data storage principles. Penalties for non-compliance. Stringent penalties underline the necessity to adherence to the law requirements. In Europe, there is a big trend in organizations that the risk appetite is very high. They are not willing to apply security measures, but they rather take the risk of a penalty. So this balance always has to be adjusted within the organization. Digital by design principle. This approach promotes the use of digital tools for compliance enhancing efficiency and interaction with regulatory authorities. The Data Protection Board takes a very important role because they ensures compliance and penalty enforcements and streamline data protection efforts. Rights of the data principles. So the enhanced rights for all the individuals, including data access, correction, deletion requests, requires efficient processes from companies. Again, I'm referring to Europe because this has become a very big pain while they were introducing the GDPR, which has some similarities to your uh, Data Privacy Act, is like just for a uh, data subject access rights information where they have to collect all the data, this can take weeks if you don't have the right tools in place. So now let's call an action. Let's pivot the concept of privacy by design and security by design. Privacy by design embeds privacy into product development, enhancing data protection and user trust and reputation building. In contrast, security by design focus on robust security controls to prevent unwanted data disclosures and data breaches. So why SME matters? Compliance requirements. SME must meet data protection regulations to avoid penalties and ensure data security. Protecting sensitive data. Safe, uh, safeguarding customer information, PII, and intellectual properties is paramount for SMEs. Build trust, prioritizing privacy and security enhances customer trust, loyalty, and establish good reputation. The risk mitigation part, so proactive measures help SMEs avoid financial losses and reputation damage from data breaches. Available technical solutions, affordable tools like encryption and access controls empower SMEs to protect sensitive data effectively. And believe me, there are many tools available that suits your organization's size, capability, and resources. Resource optimization, I already said, like you really have to tailor your requirements with what you want to achieve. So in conclusion, embracing privacy by design and security by design principles is not just a legal obligation. It is a strategic imperative for SMEs. By prioritizing data protection, SMEs can build trust, mitigate the risks, and thrive in the digital landscape. So let us embark on this journey where every small step towards enhanced security leads to significant leaps in business, resilience, and customer trust. Thank you for your attention. Let's secure a brighter future for our business and, of course, our data. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Graf. Uh, I'd like to ask the audience if you have any questions in mind for 
Mr. Graf, uh, that you'd like to ask him. Uh, if, you, if you have, please raise your hands. Okay, Mike, please. First of all, thank you very much uh, for the great session. Um, I had a couple of questions. First, uh, do Sundu have uh, working on any sustainability solutions which are available uh, for the market for, for other organizations to procure? So um, we are working for more than 10 years in this area. Um, as you know, and you also have some tools that you can check outside. This is a very active market, so every day there will be new tools coming out. I don't believe that the main thing is what tool to use, because what we usually tend to say is if we want to hang a picture on the wall, we should not talk about which hammer to use. We should talk where should be the picture, how high. So we will always talk about the object. The tool is just the instrument helping us. And one thing is very critical or crucial, I would say. Just think on instruments that are really suitable for your organization. Because sometimes people tend to go for the Ferrari to drive. But maybe a smaller car would be better fit for, the for you, for parking and anything. So like, it's always a balance. And we tend to say, just try to find the, th the tools that are usually mentioned in the gardener's quadrants because they always give you a good reputation on what they do. And then just try to map whether this is really suitable for the requirements you have and, uh, and the capability that you provide. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And the second question um, is probably to many other delegates and uh, you know dignitaries on, on this forum. I mean, our theme is tech for good, right? Now, sustainability is a corporate responsibility, right? But why don't we see organizations having open source software available for all other organizations to procure and use it in their systems? Because there are open source, I mean, Microsoft, Google has sustainability carbon footprint dashboards, but they are all commercial products. I mean, profit and a commercial product is very contradictory to a social responsibility, isn't it? You will not find a single solution available, free, open source, with all available features in the market for sustainability. Whereas we are saying, we are here, all of us are here to promote sustainability as a corporate responsibility. So this, this question is for all. I mean, we have seen organizations like Oracle who build solutions. Why don't they have these sustainability dashboards and AI-generated predictive analytics, uh, which, which triggers those action points, available as open source software? There you bring a good point. I can give you an example, Microsoft, because you mentioned Microsoft yes. before. As you might know, Microsoft is investing a lot of money and people into the development of PureView which is their embedded uh, compliance security suite. Yeah, but you need to pay for it, right? I mean, there are, <laughs> I mean, isn't it very contradictory? We are all here for a greater good, to have a better future, but we are commercializing a sustainability product, all organizations in that case. I mean, when it comes to this kind of tools, as, as you said, Microsoft has its own vision, Google has a vision, everyone has a vision. But in the end, even Gartner is stating that, that all those big players, they always rely on third-party instruments, third-party integrators. And just solving the problem with one big vendor, is like a turnkey, feel, feel good uh, um, t project, this is not going to work. So we assume that in the next five years, for sure, Every big vendor will rely on third-party integrations because when you see what's happening on the cyber defense side, on the hacker side, so they are evolving a lot using Gen.I to create all those attacks. 
So on the other side, these big players might not move as fast as the trends are moving. That's why all the smaller uh, uh, third-party integrators, they are at a faster pace, they can answer more quickly. But I agree for the community, for the world, this should be more open and should be available for all of us, Absolutely. not just making money. And we always speak with our customers, why can you not consider the data object as one of your most valuable asset? Why we have to talk and convince you protecting sensitive data? That's more the key problem we are facing, talking to organizations, because it should be a basic principle we have values given from others to us which we can work with, so why don't we protect this? So that's probably more the conceptual thinking that we should do instead of talking about the tools. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Graf. Um, I would request uh, Mr. Onindo Das, uh, Vice President Marketing, Infinity Infotech Parks, and member of our IT committee to please come up on the dais. And uh, I would request Onindo Das to do the honors to Mr. Charlie Graf. Let us conclude Mr. Graf with another round of applause. Thank you.